Hello, and welcome to Under 1000. My name's Thomas Flower, and each episode I'll read you a new piece of flash fiction. All of the stories are 1000 words or less. Today, I'll be reading Mold. Please be aware that this episode deals with themes of childhood abuse, so if that's likely to upset you, or anyone you're listening with, then you might want to skip this one. You held my arms tightly in your grasp. Nails pierced the skin slowly, and blood trickled out in a gentle stream, hitting the floor imperceptibly beneath us. I gasped and winced, unsure what would come next. Rot mould growing between us, an infection which cannot be removed. A year later, and the scar is still there. I know I did not imagine this. I think sometimes that I did, but the scar is always there to remind me. A perfect crescent shape embedded in my skin. A tiny waning moon, cut shallowly, to remind me that that moment was real. The rot has not spread, but it has not abated. We are still divided by a line of disease. Ten years on, and the scar has gone, faded and retreated back to a pale nothingness on me. The memories, too, have become hazy and blurred, My only alibi has deserted me now. Did I imagine it all along, scar and all? I'm confused, unsure. I don't know what you did, or what I did, or what really happened. Perhaps I'm being unreasonable. Perhaps I should just forget. Mold. In my brain. Growing. A few more years, and I can no longer express what happened in specifics. Only feelings and fears which are powerful but imprecise. I can see my own arm, bleeding. Your stern face. The feeling of desperate terror. I can remember the moment ending, and the world moving on as normal, like my safety and security hadn't been suddenly snatched from underneath me. I cannot remember why it happened. I cannot remember details. It's a grotesque, blurred vision, splashed forever across my mind in watercolours. My head, a ball of moss. My brain leaking out of my ears to make room for more dirt. It probably wasn't just that one time either. I think... But I don't know. My scar was my only solid memory, and now I don't even have that. How can I know if any of it was true at all? Maybe I made it all up, because I was angry, or sad, or confused, or seeking attention. That would be much more convenient to believe. Rot growing, infecting memories and ideas always with me. And now we sit and talk and sit and talk, but there is one topic we can never reach. I don't know if you forgot or would just prefer not to remember. I don't know if I want to ask you or if I'm too scared to know your answer. You're changed now. You're better. It's not like it was back then. The line is still between us, still keeping us slightly apart. You wouldn't do that to me now, would you? Then why do I still feel uneasy? A trail of dirt, invited into the home, drawing rings and circles around us all. Who is to say what the truth is? 
I'm no philosopher. Who is to say what even happened at all? I'm no historian. Who is to say whether it really matters now? I'm no psychiatrist. Maybe there was nothing. Or it was a dream. Or even if it was real, it doesn't affect me anyway. Maybe. 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 But for all that I'm not, I still know there's something wrong deep inside. Excuses and alibis, full of mold, discarded. I've seen children now, the age I was when that blood was taken from me. I've seen how they laugh and how they smile, how they carry on and how they play. And mostly, I've seen how scared and angry they can be over nothing, over the tiniest prevarication. And I wonder, was I like that too? I want to tell myself no. I want to say that I deserved it, or that while it happened it didn't mean that much to me. But I've seen how children are, and I know that no child can be unaffected by nails buried suddenly in the skin. A window opened, somewhere distant. This festering place needs cleaning. I remember. I make myself remember. I don't need a scar to know that this is real. I don't need somebody to tell me how I must have felt. I don't need to be shown the effects such a tiny act can have. A few drops of blood changed me over time. The tiny crescent moon now faded into my skin has become a part of me. For better or worse, this happened and it shaped me. A bucket, a mop, a sponge, determination. I don't know what to say to you. I don't know how to put it into words, to ask you if you still remember a tiny moment so many years ago. I don't know how to tell you that I still remember it now, still think about it, still wonder what went wrong what happened, what I did. I don't know if these questions are worth asking anyway. You gave me this moment, but I don't think you can give me answers. I don't think you can give me satisfaction. I don't think you can give me closure. I must determine the story for myself. I will interpret as I need. I can only believe that it is a truth to me. There is nothing more I can do. It is all I can take from this. This is not the end, but it's something. I don't need a scar or a perfect memory to know what happened to me. A clean brain. Rot pushed to the corners. Settling dust. Thank you for listening to Under 1000. I'm your host, Thomas Flower. To follow the show online, look for Under 1000 Pod on Twitter or Facebook. If you'd like to support the show on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash under1000pod, where you can sign up to read each month's stories in advance, as well as to have a thank you be read during these credits. The theme music is an instrumental version of In Between Days by Nick Tate and the Sharks. To hear the full song and more from the same EP, go to nictate, N-I-C-T-A-T-E, and the sharks.bandcamp.com, or search for them on your favourite streaming platform. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and that you'll join me again next time for some more super short fiction.